Agendas can be found at Topeka.org. For cases that require public hearings, the procedure will be as follows. First, the planning staff will summarize the case. Next, we will hear from the applicant or the representative. Then we will receive public testimony. Public comments should be addressed solely to the chair and are limited to four minutes. Amanda, please take the roll. Mr. Dean. Here. Ms. Heron. Here. Mr. Tobobbin. Here. Mr. Nager. Here. Mr. Cow. Here. Mr. Warner. Here. I'm sorry, we, six are present, so we have a quorum. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the approval of minutes for June 26, 2023. Anyone like to make a motion? Move to approve. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Amanda, would you please take the roll? Mr. Warner? Aye. Mr. Tobobbin? Aye. Mr. Nager? Aye. Mr. Kaut? Aye. Ms. Heron? Aye. Mr. Dean? Aye. Minutes approved, six zero. Thank you. Next, the declaration of conflict of interest, ex parte communications by members of the commission or staff. Are there any declarations tonight? If not, we will move into action items. Number one, P23 11 Elk Lake Shawnee subdivision, preliminary and final plat. Mr. Chairman, uh, Annie Driver prepared the re prepared the report. I will be she's not here today, so I'm going to be presenting the slides. There we go. Okay, so Elk Lake Shawnee subdivision is a two lot subdivision on a 3.13 acre site. Uh, it includes an extension of 28th Street Terrace to the east property line of that of that tract. Uh, it's zoned M2, which is a medium density multifamily residential zoning district. Uh, that was rezoned in uh, 2020. Uh, this project consists of two phases. Phase one is 17 units of, of attached uh, apartments, kind of a townhouse style apartments. Uh, Keep in mind, however, it, the zoning could allow for something different than that, but uh, the design of the site plan, it's relevant because it dictates what needs to happen on the plat. But there's some, it, it's straight zoning, it's straight M2 zoning, so he could do something different if he wanted to uh, later on. Um, but uh, as conceived, there are 17 units in, in uh, phase two, or excuse me, phase one, and phase two consists of eight units. These are these are three bedroom, two bath, two garages, two car garages. So this is the site plan. Uh, as I just mentioned, the site plan will be reviewed and approved separately via site plan review, uh, but it does it does uh, have an effect on how the plat is laid out, how the plat is designed. One thing that's, that's uh, important here is the way this is laid out is there's a private drive down the middle of each of these lots, one extending north from the new 28th Street Terrace and one extending south. And that provides a fire lane and also a turnaround. So this is the preliminary plat, on, excuse me, the preliminary plat on the left and the final plat on the right. And what you can see is that there's this utility easement down the center of, of lot one. And there's a, a stormwater management easement on lot two. I went too fast. This is just an illustration of how that street will be extended. The idea being that uh, 29th Street's an arterial, carries a lot of traffic. It's not really 
preferred that there be a lot of access, direct access off of 29th. And so this, this street in behind can provide access to those, to those lots and to that land use. It also could be extended uh, all the way to the east eventually as that property gets developed and could extend to Croco. This is the future land use map. And uh, the area right around the intersection is identified as a mixed use nodal area. So the idea is that the plan supports a mix of uses, including residential of higher density as a transition into lower density residential uses. And that's kind of what's happening here. There's, there's uh, retail commercial at the, at the intersection and along, along 29th, and that oval that's cross-hatched, that's an area identified as strip commercial. The idea being that right now, there's a lot of direct access. It's kind of developed in somewhat of a strip pattern. And over time, uh, it's better if that access be better controlled. Uh, and this proposed subdivision does that. Staff is recommending approval with these conditions that are in the staff report. These are fairly detailed technical conditions. Um, the one thing that is on the plat, uh, initially uh, staff had gotten feedback that there needs to be a temporary turnaround at the end of that new street extension. And that's not really necessary because the, the first phase will provide a 20-foot wide drive, driveway that will provide a way for, for uh, emergency trucks, fire trucks and, and such to turn around. That concludes my presentation. The applicant is here if you have any questions of Mr. Alcabuzzi. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions for staff by commissioners? Mike, I'm looking for, uh, on the preliminary, for any of the plats that we have here, uh, lot lines for phase two. Am I missing them? Yeah, so uh, so phase two, I think what's going to have to happen, so phase two is just one lot. So phase one is one lot on the north side of the extension of 28th Terrace. Phase two is, is a second single lot on the south side of the, of, uh, the extension of 28th Terrace. Um, the only reason there are two lots is because there's a public street being dedicated because it's all going to be the plan is for the developer to own all of it and manage it as an as a apartment property so when the time comes for phase two to be developed there'll be a new plat with the lot lines for the eight the eight lots so there will not be eight lots there will be eight units on one lot but you raise a good point which I didn't really get into I think it's going to be a necessity that the second, because because of the stormwater um, detention basin, it's on the north. The way for the first phase, it's on the north, uh, be the northeast corner of lot two, and that's because there's a house there. Right. And the second phase, that house will be de demolished and replaced with eight units, and then the stormwater detention basin will most likely shift to the southwest corner of that lot. And that will, that will necessitate most likely the need to, to replat that property. Okay, thank you. Got a question. Um, just in general, um, what are our setback requirements? And is there a uh, setback from the back property line and from the street? What might those be? Those are driven by the zoning, and the setbacks are 25 front, 25 rear, and five on each side. Okay. So, I mean, it appears here that the buildings would back up to the back property line pretty much. Is that, am I looking at this correctly? So, so if you're looking at the site plan, yes. you might be looking at the site plan. So, the way that's configured, uh, the front lot line is what abuts the street. Mm-hmm. And then the rear lot line is the opposite, so it's the far north. And so the the apartments, they're basically a townhouse style apartment. Okay. And and uh, their orientation is 
is such that their the rear of the apartments will be along the side lot lines. Okay. And so what is that side uh, five, set? Five feet five is feet? the setback. And, okay. And there's there's some shifting that went along went 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 on with this a little bit uh, in discussion with the applicant. Mm -hmm. um, we were trying to get a utility easement on the east side. Okay. And so what he's going to do is shift those units as far to the west as he can, which is a five foot setback, because there's a utility easement on the uh, west side of the west lot line mm -hmm. in okay. the existing subdivision. Okay. And then I'm assuming since it's a, a private drive, we don't have a requirement for any sidewalk or anything like that. Is that correct? Uh, we don't. It's not an absolute requirement. Correct. Okay. Uh, through the site plan process, as we review that, that's something that could come out of that. Mm -hmm. uh, there's some other issues about you know whether someone should be able to park on that fire lane. Probably not. Okay. Uh, so there, it's a little tight, honestly. But it, right. it, it is going to have to go through site plan review. Okay. Where we look at those details, and that's an administrative process. Okay. One thing I, I want to make sure I uh, don't fail to mention: we did receive, and it's in front of you. Uh, an email uh, from a, a neighboring property owner who is opposed to this uh, mm -hmm. subdivision plat, um, really opposed to the land use. Um, this this person owns property probably a little more than 200 feet away to, to the northwest of this. Um, so the subdivision plat is really about does it meet the subdivision regulations? Is it consistent with the comprehensive plan? Um, really, the issue that this property owner is raising, it's certainly valid for you to take it into consideration, but um, the zoning was changed to allow for this density of development. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, just to follow up on, on Jim's question. So because it's one lot, and the front yard faces the street. That's the reason it's the front yard. And then the, the true rear of these units actually face the side yard. That is correct. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's what I thought. Uh, second question, is 28th Street, it's not there now, 28th Street Terrace, that, is the city putting that in, or is the developer? That's at the expense of the developer. The developer okay. will build that and then dedicate it to the city. Okay. And, and this... Beyond your recommendation or beyond your decision, you're making a decision on the plat. Mm -hmm. um, this will go before the governing body for acceptance of the rights of way for streets and utility easements. And are we hearing both? Are, are we voting on both these lots tonight? You're voting on this plat. The whole plat. The whole plat. Okay. Correct. Yeah, it's all being final platted. Okay. And the reason you said that the <coughs> plant may change in the future is because that detention pond may change uh, location, basically. Correct. I, yeah. Based on the developer's anticipated site plan for that, with lot two, the southernmost lot, um, that detention basin is going to have to shift. One last question. Was, was the, it looks like there's restricted access along 29th Street. So, but, but it looks like there's two openings. Good questions. <laughs> uh, yeah. So currently, the, they, the house that's there, they're going to be allowed to continue to use those access points. But when that redevelops, uh, access will be restricted. All the way across? All the way across. Okay. You got it covered. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, you mentioned that there's potential with future development of connecting it to Croco. Am I right in thinking that in part because it's a private road and in part because of the development to the north, that that northern uh, way through, that would not have any like foreseeability of being connected to anything else? You are correct. Uh, the, the land immediately north of this property is already developed. Uh, there are duplexes on a cul-de-sac, mm -hmm. and so there's no opportunity really to extend it north. All right, thanks. Any other questions for staff? If not, we are to applicant presentation. Is there someone representing the owner here? Yep, come on up. Just, is, 
My name is A.R. Gravesi. I've worked with the folks at uh, City Planning for the last probably three years, uh, trying to come up with a, with a, a combination that, that would be a win-win type. Uh, uh, you know, we looked at a lot of options. And uh, after, you know, how do you go about extending Southeast 28th Terrace, which way it's going to go, you know, eventually, and all that good stuff. And then we looked at the dense, you know, and so the, the rezoning process was done in 2020. And so the density of what we have and so forth has already been done in 2020. So we went through the process of trying to figure out what, how do you configure it, how do you, how do you lay things out where it's a, where it's a useful, uh, you know, for the community and, and be able to make it cost effective. Um, and so there is a need for, in our area, in Shawnee Heights area, where I have lived for decades, there is a need for more uh, housing. And uh, there is a similar development to this um, uh, off of 36 and uh, Southeast, Southeast uh, 35th Street, basically 35th Street and Croco Road and 36th Street. They have done a nice job in putting up duplexes, mainly retirement type uh, community um, for folks who are above over 55. It's a higher end. And so we were going to follow that approach. And we talked to, we had a neighborhood information meeting and we had some people from the neighborhood that came, you know, some neighbors that, that, that attended it and they were looking forward to uh, something like that because it will benefit the folks that live in the area. And so uh, um, quick comments on the setbacks and so forth. Um, on that east side, it's an eight foot um, setback the way we have it now okay. uh, instead of five. And then... Remember, there's a, we said there's a 16-foot, usually, setback. So eight on, eight on our side and then eight on the other side down the pike when the, when the other property is developed. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the west side, there is a five-foot um, uh, setback. But on the other hand, there is a permanent 16-foot utility right. on the other side, easement, mm -hmm. that is already in place. And that's the reason behind the numbers that you have there. You were asking about mm -hmm. what is the – and so that's what that part – is about. Yeah. Um, um, other than that, I do not have anything uh, okay. to add to this. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Thank you. Are there any questions for the applicant? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next, next we will get uh, this one. Is with a, Mr. Chairman, yes, we this is not a public hearing. It is a public hearing. You do consider this a public hearing? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Uh, next, public testimony. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to speak on this issue? If so, you have four minutes per person. If not, we will move in, close the public hearing, and go into discussion by commissioners. Any discussion? And if no discussion, I'd be open for a motion. I will make a motion. Okay. Uh, I move to forward approval of the final plan of for Elk Lake Shawnee subdivision to the governing body for acceptance of land to be dedicated for public purposes upon the conditions in the staff report below being completed. Thank you. Is there a second? Seconded. Thank you. It's moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? If not, would you please take the vote? Mr. Dean? Aye. Ms. Heron? Aye. Mr. Kaut? Aye. Mr. Nager? Aye. Mr. Tobobin? Aye. Mr. Warner? Aye. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you. Next up is public hearing for CU 23-03 DT Garages. And that was also... Ms. Driver, Mike, you going to take that one? Yes, thank you. 
So uh, CU-2303 is a conditional use permit request for, uh, it's called DT Garages uh, by applicant and owner <coughs> Frank Mead. So these garages are enclosed, individual enclosed uh, garages for parking storage. Uh, they're for cars and light trucks. Uh, the idea is th this works like self-storage, where it's 24 hours a day, accessed by keypad. Uh, this is in an area that's already currently surface parking. Uh, but but as, as uh, proposed and as shown on the, or as conditioned on the site plan, uh, general self-storage would not be permitted by this conditional use permit. It's only for individual car parking. Uh, as the applicant explained to me, explained to us when he applied, he sees a need for people that, say, live in downtown or live around downtown, uh, might not have a lot of parking or not, might not have a lot of space in a garage <laughs> to park a car securely. And so there's a need for this, for that, potentially. The current zoning of this property is D1 downtown, uh, the conditional use permit. In this case, would allow an interim use of property pending development envisioned by the downtown master plan 20, 2022. So um, this is not a poster child, I guess, for uh, what is a what the downtown district aspires to be. Uh, it's kind of on an ed edge location of the D1 district. It's in an area where the context is parking, surface parking, kind of semi-industrial, commercial. Um, this probably wouldn't be appropriate on Kansas Avenue, for example, but being where it's located and cr under current market conditions and what the owner wishes to do, uh, this is a, what is, is staff's opinion is a, an appropriate interim use. Um, and there are certain things that the applicant is doing with materials and so forth. Uh, to make it appropriate as possible for its context. The downtown master plan, um, the subject property lies within the proposed water tower district of the downtown Topeka master plan. Uh, the conditional use permit recommends elements of downtown design guidelines such as orientation, composition, and, and, the, and the applicant is interested in uh, using this as a platform for murals that he would work through another organization potentially to commission an artist to provide murals on the walls. The wall that faces, uh, faces Monroe. So this is the site plan and uh, the, the left side covers the entire parcel that's owned by the applicant. Uh, the right zooms in on where this, these garages are going to be located. So they're mid-block. Uh, they cover an area where they're already, an area that's already occupied by individual surface parking spaces. The building would be at the front property line, uh, which is, might not be appropriate everywhere, but in the D1 district, it is probably the most appropriate. Um, so the, this is the building elevations. And the, the uh, building elevations on the top, that's the west facing, so that faces interior to the site. The elevation below is the east facing, so that faces the street. These buildings are essentially metal buildings, but the applicant has agreed to use a, a more appropriate, more durable material for the east facing or street facing facade. Uh, he's using a, a cyber cement, excuse me, <laughs> fiber cement panel system for that facade. So staff is recommending approval uh, subject to the conditions in the staff report. Uh, there's one condition regarding landscaping. The idea was that there would be street trees at this location. The applicant indicated to me that when the city, the city did a project along there to beautify Monroe at a time the Brown D board uh, facility was being accepted or dedicated or whatever the term might be 
I, I believe the, I think President Bush visited Topeka. So there was a kind of a beautification effort along that street. And as a result of that, a bunch of rock and gravel and concrete, uh, you know, recycled concrete or unused concrete uh, was was uh, dumped in, in that area between the right of way. So it's really not a good, uh, it's not a good place to plant trees. They're not going to thrive there at all. Uh, we had the forestry manager look at it, and he concurred with that. So uh, based on that, we're not recommending that trees be put in the right-of-way. Um, and uh, again, the applicant intends to look into having murals painted on those exterior walls. It's pretty hard to make that a requirement. Um, and so uh, that's where staff has landed on this in terms of our recommendation. Be happy to take any questions. And the applicant, uh, Frank Mead, is here to, to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Any questions for staff? Mr. Colt? Mike, the report and your report and the written report emphasize that this is an interim use, an appropriate interim use in the D1 district. Staff consider placing a, a term of years on the CUP. Yeah, some thought was given to that. Uh, we didn't. We decided not to do that. I don't know what that use would be, and maybe it could be. I mean, the life of a building is longer than ten, longer than ten or twenty years. So I, uh, we did not make that recommendation, or we did not ask the applicant about that. But if there was a for example, a 10-year, 15-year term on it, and if the use would change between now and then to a more appropriate use in D1, then that would be the owner's, the owner's doing. But if it was still there 10 or 15 years from now, and the CUP comes up, it, it could be renewed. If if it's still an appropriate interim use, if there hasn't been other uh, more appropriate D1 uses in the area. Yeah, Commissioner, I think you could place a condition on it that does have an expiration. Uh, and as part of that condition, you could say it could be renewed, I think is what you're suggesting. I, I'm, I'm sorry, Mike, could you repeat that? Okay, I, I think what you're suggesting is possibly place a condition that limits the, the period under which the CUP or they, the garages can be located there and used that way. And then as part of that condition, you could say it could be renewed. I think is what you're suggesting. Is that right? Yeah, following another here application for a renewal and, and, and a public hearing and right. approval by the by the governing body. Okay. Um, and again, I I don't know that I'm advocating that. I don't know that I'll I'll make a motion for that. But I just wonder what the, what the staff's thought about it. And you already answered that, I guess. You you considered it, but did not discuss it with the applicant. But. So. Uh, Commissioner, I don't know if we really thought very hard about that. I think one perspective could be that as downtown redevelops, uh, as the master plan gets implemented, uh, market forces could could uh, compel the owner uh, to uh, redevelop it at a higher intensity uh, with you know something with more uh, income potential than than individual garages. So that's one perspective. Uh, and it's a very logical one. I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Um, also talking about those market forces that aren't currently there to like increase the housing or other things that were described in the master plan. Um, does the potential for the missing middle changes, zoning changes, have some impact towards making that easier for market forces to do that? Yeah, I think so. And, and you know, by saying that, I don't want to put myself out as some economist that knows what the <laughs> mark, yeah. what the mark, I mean, really, the owner can probably answer that better than I can. Um, so, yeah, I think that. We've identified a need for missing middle housing. Uh, certainly, there's a 
uh, the demand for housing in a downtown location. Um, so, you know, I, I think that question is probably better for the applicant. Thanks. Any other questions for staff? Okay, if not, we'll open it to applicant presentation. Well, hello there. I, um, uh, I'm going to adjust a few things that were said. First off, I'm here representing Tanza Oz, LLC, and I'm the head wizard at Kansas Oz. Okay, my name's Frank Mead. And uh, the property lines that they show have all changed and every that thing with the sale, moving ownerships, blah, blah, blah. But the, pro the building is still going to be on the same spot, same place, same reasons. All right. Uh, we're... We're here to create a little miracle in the uh, water tower district because uh, I can go back to, uh, oh, you know, we can go back to, what do we want? Here's 2000. Oh, here's a, this is, you ought to read this again, 1997. It's still the same, hadn't changed, don't need another study. 97 will be fine. Uh, so we're, it, we consider it a small miracle to get anything built in the water tower zone. You mentioned housing. I'm going to briefly jump over to that in that it's virtually, in, it, it, it's, you have to have a market. You have to have a market for it. Look, at the cost of building a building is virtually the same whether it's a class A or class B or class C. You know, you can look at the, the recent reports from Moody's. I've got them this week from Moody's on the cost of building those. The difference between a B and an A are virtually nothing. You've got Class A being, beat, being built on the west side. You're giving these people the same benefits. We've got, the, what's the motivation? We, we can't cut costs. We can't do that. We have to compete with the west side. Ain't going to happen. People are going to live on the west side. Uh, the cost of a new building is going to be the same, whether we do it here or there. And we'll have a mar we have a market on the west side. We do not have a market in central downtown. So I'm going to jump back to where I was uh, in that. I think it was on here somewhere. Um, this is, a, a, there's 10 little garages, standard size garage, 10 by 25, roll-up door. We've made the roll-up doors extra high to allow for people with trucks, big wheel trucks, and uh, stuff like, and racks and stuff on the top of their trucks so they won't catch them coming in. There's a special locking system that we're going to be using on these I had imported from England, and it, it, you can't get anything like that in the United States, and it will make sure that you virtually have to destroy the door to get in. I'm not, I mean, it, it's almost impossible. We've tested them. We've now currently using them on one of our facilities. Uh, the, uh, okay, he's explained the access will probably be from Quincy, although we have double gates there. We can actually let them in from Monroe. The tail end of this thing will be pushing out into Monroe. Uh, and this is just a replacement of existing parking. We're not creating something new. There's parking stalls there now. They just don't have a cover over them. So we're putting a cover over those parking stalls. Uh, and uh, the, the back end of it, well, we'll talk about the trees and stuff later. But right now, why do we need this thing? Well, weather. People living downtown, and we do have some, believe it or not, living downtown, don't want to leave their car out in the alley with their alley parking or whatever type of parking they have for weather reasons. Security, ah, that's a good reason. That's a good reason. Um, for what it's worth, I've had two cars stolen in the last six months. What can I say? It's Topeka. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it gets old. Um, the, uh, so they need security. Uh, some of them have more than one car, but they only get one parking space with where their, where their apartments and stuff. Uh, some of them have maybe a high quality, very fancy car, and they don't want to leave it out uh, out there. Yeah, maybe it's a show car. They have, a lot of people will have secondary show cars and stuff. Now, uh, why is this not a D1 to begin with? We, it was previously in there. I could, I'm sure I could dig it out if I wanted to. It's previously... C4, but 
it is no longer, it's now D1, and I can't tell you why it doesn't meet. Michael have to tell you the reasons it doesn't meet D1. Uh, he'll, he'll explain that if you wish to ask him. Trees. The trees were an issue back in uh, our great and glorious Mayor McClinton decided to come up with a project and it, he didn't have the funds, he didn't have the equipment, he didn't have the manpower. And so he rushed everything. He dug a giant hole out there and I caught them before they had filled in the hole, took pictures of it. They had filled that hole. They'd taken the dirt out because they needed the dirt to fill in places and they'd taken all the sidewalks they'd torn up, all this curbing they'd torn up and stuff and threw it in a hole. My property, right outside my building, not my permission, and they filled up a hole there. That's why trees won't grow there. Now we already put, we filed complaints with the engineering department just in case something like this happens that we get to this point in the future because complaints were already filed at the time with engineering and engineering did nothing about it. Everything was left where it was. Um, I don't know how you'd like that at your property. Somebody come along, dig a giant hole, fill it to the top with rock and then put this much dirt on top. And I didn't like it but they wouldn't change it. So that's the tree problem. Now, let's see, what else have we got? Um, well, this, I'll just say this is a very, very small start. This is just a little beginning. I want to see more there. I want to work with people. If there's other people who want to work with me on projects and stuff down there, I will be happy to in that. Housing is going to be one of the hardest ones to do because, again, we're competing and that's, that's what the place would be good for. We're competing with the west side. It costs us the same to build as it does on the west side. The cost differential between an A and a B is virtually nothing. A class A and a class B. So we're having to compete with the west side and we can't charge the prices. Uh, for instance, that new complex that went out there, he is charging approximately, let's see, uh, he's charging approximately $3 per square foot per month for the rental of that of those of a small apartment there that ain't going to work in downtown Topeka you're not going to get the people who would move to downtown to people who need the property in downtown Topeka they will not be able to but if somebody wants to try it somebody wants to do it I'll be happy to work with them uh, we've got a lot of land down there basically I've got parts of I think it was six blocks down there that I have parts of Quite a bit of land surface area. Be real happy. I've had it since, uh, well, as you can see, I've got the studies that go back to 97. I think I started buying the land in somewhere around 96. Uh, I had built uh, the SRS building at uh, 10th and Can uh, yeah, 11th and Kansas, and it got torn down. So we took, took the money and bought the land with the hopes that someday we'd be able to do something. This is a small start on that. Now, that location, uh, let's say if you came up with a good project, hey, <laughs> that ain't that expensive a building. I'll tear it down. I mean, seriously, if you give me a good project, for instance, in uh, uh, this is a lodging feasibility study. I paid for this. The city did not. I paid for this study. And it says that we could build a hotel there. It's got all the figures and all that kind of stuff. And... Uh, there's the location we're looking at and all that kind of stuff and it says that um, things can be done that we do ha uh, and that there and if somebody wants to work with me in the future on it be happy to really be happy to but this is a small start but it is a start I've worn out my speaking that's it thank you are there any questions for the applicant If not, we will move on to, uh, thank you, public testimony. Are there any, anybody in the audience and public like to speak on this matter? Hi, Frank. Yeah, a wizard. Are you kidding me? Good morning. Hello. Henry McClure of downtown Topeka. I took advantage of your um, program of taking uh, spaces and let, allowing uh, residents to
to be developed in commercial spaces. It's a beautiful idea. Thank you. Um, I've also got a challenge on a, one of my listings, Formant Center, of parking. It's the very things he's trying to solve. And this by far is not a glamorous idea, but it's necessary. It's, uh, and I, I, don't, I don't think you really got to worry about the time frame because if it ever, if the market ever does heat up, this is one guy that's going to want to make a buck on it. And that's not bad. Uh, so there may be a higher and better use, but today the market is saying do this. And I'm telling you, Will, you probably, uh, I know I'm only supposed to address the chair technically, but I do know one of your commissioners <laughs> lives in an area just down the street from a project I'm working on. He probably would take advantage of it. But that was one of the very first things that I had to do uh, was negotiate a part of my lease as some storage area and where am I going to park my car. I actually leave another one of my vehicles at my office and it's uh, just because I don't have parking and, and it's a concern. So um, although it's not the most um, old shiny object in the, the world, but it, it's really a necessary evil and I hope you can, uh, I don't mean to even say evil, but it's a necessary use. So I hope that you could support him. Um, uh, I think it's a very legitimate use, and the market is telling us that that's what we need to do today. So as a developer who's trying to overcome these challenges on another project, these very same issues, because I'm going to have to build garages and things on this other project. I've got a 56,000-square-foot building that I'm trying to put as many units in as possible. And I'm doing a feasibility study, and I've hired uh, Brian Falk, and we've had Cook, Flat, and Strobel over to look at it. So give the guy a break and support his deal. Thank right. you. Thank you. Anybody else in the audience who want to speak on this? If not, we will close the public hearing and move on to discussion by commissioners. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I'm, I'm sorry. Before you do that. There's something I intended to correct in the staff report. It's okay. quite minor, but I think it needs to be corrected for the record. So on page one of the staff report, um, under requested action current zoning, it says that there's a conditional use permit issued in 2003 mm -hmm. for a transmission shop. And it says here that that conditional use permit is still valid. Uh, upon further looking a little closer at this uh, and something that was pointed out to me by, by the, our city attorney, that conditional use permit is, is really not valid. That use never really, and I, I talked to the owner about this, the applicant about this, that, never, that use never really commenced. And, and there is something in our ordinance that if the use doesn't commence by a certain date, March 1st, 2012, that um, it's no longer valid. So not a big deal, but I want to make that correction in the staff report, and I wanted to uh, make you aware of it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, discussions by commissioners? Uh, Mr. Chairman, if, if we make the changes to the staff report, I want to, what I was going to mention to you after the meeting, Mike, but the... Uh, Paragraph 11, right above recommendation. That paragraph 11, five lines down. The sentence that starts, on the other hand, approval. I think that should be disapproval. I think you're right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? And if not, we would be open for a motion. I move for approval subject to the conditions that are listed in the staff report. Thank you. Second. Second. 
It's been moved to second. Do we have any discussions on the motion? If not, would you please take the vote? Mr. Warner? Aye. Mr. Tobobbin? Aye. Mr. Nager? Aye. Mr. Kaup? Aye. Ms. Heron? Aye. Mr. Dean? Aye. Motion passes 6-0. Thank you. Next, we're to communications by staff. Commissioners, just real quick, I mentioned the ADU work group last month and asked for some volunteers, just letting everybody know that's interested in that, that we are re reaching out to other folks to get that work group up and running. Contacts have been made, and hopefully by the end of August, early July, we'll no, end of July, early August, we will um, get going on that work group. It'll probably be two Zoom meetings, maybe a little more. Um, we probably won't just look at the ADU ordinance. We'll probably look at some other things like parking, um, particularly uh, see if we can have a, some sort of administrative waiver for parking uh, so we don't have to do PUDs for every residential project that comes along. So. Okay. Thank you. And with that, I think we would be adjourned. Thanks.